Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. We're late. Well, we were we were swimming, so we got lost in the pool. Did we did get lost in the pool. So. What are we doing over here? I figured I would start with the some of the graphite wash things since I've been playing with that lately. And mm, set up another. That's a kind of a big piece. It's nine by twelve. Yeah, it's not that big. <laughs> but uh. Oh wait, 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 wait! Oh, before you start, hold on. This is just graphite powder and water in a cooking. Thing. In a baking sheet. Yeah, because I need a big, uh, basically a big palette for the big brush. One of the things about uh, uh, making texture is getting different sizes of shape, and this is, you know, the best way to do it through the different sponges and different size brushes and stuff. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we can start. Yeah. So this is kind of like when I we, I posted that like little ten second clip. Like last week? Yes. It's the same thing. I'm just... Uh... He said nice hair. Oh, Wait I'm... a minute. I'm on the wrong side. Huh? Yeah, you should be on the other side. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Can't see anything. So, it's one of the things about doing the, the graphite and water is that um, the, key, the key is kind of stopping at the right moment. Uh, and then realizing that most of what you see is going to get muted because you're going to end up burnishing it. Or you can you could actually let this dry and uh, spray it with crystal, crystal clear. And the thin parts would get really glossy and the big fat parts where it's really thick would go matte. So it would have like this kind of a, what do you call it, that, uh, that spot varnishing that they do on covers sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? But, but the idea is like that. I use different size brushes mostly to get just some variation in line weight, but it, I've been starting with this lately because it's a, just a way of covering the board mostly. Large areas. I notice over here, this is very watery, but over here is really That's more dry, thick. yeah, and, and that's kind of where you load it up and it'll go dark, it can go dark. Obviously, if it's just a little damp, it'll get really dark, and if it's very wet, then it does this thing where it, it sort of, it starts to, to make these little uh, veins and, mm. and like rivulet kind of things. Uh, but like I said, most of that will uh, be gone. Will, right? it, it won't be gone, but it'll burnish to a point where you can just barely see it. Um, so. Ken, Kenneth said he never knew that you could do it with graphite. Yeah, and this is just straight up graphite powder. Like um, this is, I this is the generals in this container. But I, I, what I've realized is I've been mixing the generals with uh, the, the Creta color. So it's you know I, I really haven't. I mean, I guess one of them's a little lighter than the other. Uh, this is um, a ampersand clayboard. Ampersand clayboard. Yeah. And it, you have done this on like watercolor paper, but it. Yeah, if it's a porous watercolor paper, it just makes it a lot harder to lift the graphite back out of it once right. it's dry. Someone you asked can do it on a good hot press paper that's heavy. Like but it's still going to be difficult. It's still, it'll be more difficult. It's like a 150 pound Fabriano hot press. You can you can make it work. But you do have to adjust things a bit because it is more difficult. So. Someone asked the benefits of this over ink. Uh, that, that I can erase it? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't erase, yeah, because you I erase mean, back into this. You can you can do somewhat, do, you can erase ink to a degree on clayboard with, because of the, search, the, the nature of the surface. Uh, but this is, I just like the silver, once this is done and I burnish it, it'll, it'll actually start to look metallic. Oh, uh, yeah. So. Wendy asked if I was an artist too, or just the narrator. Uh, I do. She's both actually. Uh, Vicky has a degree in interior design, and uh, has been doing like some t-shirt design lately. Uh, and so, mostly, so you do have mostly. Yeah, I'm the business part. Mostly you do business here, but I mean you can do anything you want. But so I kind of like that. So I, I wasn't gonna try to get it to go too far, but if it's one of the things you got to do is just when you get something you like, stop and play with it and see if it works out. So the next thing that I do is I get a hot gun. This is actually a really super hot hot air gun. Uh, I believe it, it'll like go up to uh, like 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is got to be careful because you can actually make the make the board, board bubble if you're not too careful. Right. But it's really reflective right now. It'll get matte when it dries, and then when I polish it, it goes back to being shiny again. But it'll look metallic rather than rather than like black ink. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are some things you can do that will keep it from completely obliterating all the little bits of detail. I like that. Huh? 
I like that right there. Yeah, it starts to look like uh, like veins or you know really organic stuff. So, uh, I kind of like what's going on here too. But the thing is, is that that's kind of it's probably going to end up being just background information, you know. When right, I'm done. right. Uh, I could actually uh, leave it the way it is and make it like a it really would look like a landscape. Which I've done that before too. Mm, I love the random backgrounds. Yeah. It won't be as high contrast when I'm done either. Debbie says, thank you for showing this. I've been hoping you would show this method. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple more up on uh, YouTube. I think from the 5th or 12th of May that you do the whole process also. Yeah. Obviously, the more water you put on, the longer it takes to dry it. But if you don't dry it uh, completely before you start to polish it, basically you'll just rub it off. Yeah. It'll just, it'll just uh, wipe it, it it'll, off. It'll smear it basically to a degree that, and it won't be the same kind of smear. Right. Mop mm -hmm. Spot says they have graphite powder and they use it to so power powder as a lubricant for power tools. Yeah, yeah, that's graphite. Uh, graphite powder is used for lubricant in many uh, industrial, I guess, uh, applications. Um, another person said, I looked into Hans Bellner after we recommending him on your last live stream, and his drawings and photos are absolutely mesmerizing. I think, I'm glad you did that. Uh, it's really interesting because then you get to see where uh, Geiger, Geiger, um, Geiger. Where, where he, uh, you know, where a lot of his uh, aesthetic originated and how it evolved in him over the years and mm -hmm. became something completely different. Alexander said, I just did my first drawing on clayboard and almost don't want to go back to paper. You know, since I've been doing it on clayboard, I really, uh, I've been, I, I still go back to paper, but that's usually when I feel like I'm out of control and I need to, I need to feel like I'm totally in control yeah. because uh, <laughs> uh, the clayboard, it, it, it does fight with you a bit, but it's, it's definitely worth the fight. So you can Billy see says, I love when artists show their techniques. Mm -hmm. It's almost I, dry. I actually watch a lot of it too. Um, I go through periods where that's just what I'll turn on in my studio, and I'll, I'll like I'll get like uh, people painting in their studios. Like I've, I went through a phase where I, I for like a couple of weeks where I would just watch uh, Scott Waddell videos. Oh yeah. Yeah, it yeah. You're almost completely dry. Not quite, because you see where it's still dark. And it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. When it gets, you can't stay on one spot too long. Aram says, "I'm really glad I found your work. The texture from your method is beautiful." No, oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, he, Andrew asked, "I missed the first part of the video. Did you just use water and graphite on board?" It's right yes. there. It, this is uh, a mixture of generals and Creedacolor graphite, and this is just water. It's just flavor. water, no alcohol or anything. Like you can still see the, the kind of. It's all goopy over here, see? Mm. Water. Right. Now, usually this is dry enough that I can start uh, trying to polish it, but I don't polish it right away. What I'll do is, and I can't use that brush. You need a dry brush. I need a dry brush. Here it is. I'll use this one. So there's, no, wait. What, these are just like these Home are like Depot the cheap, brushes, the, right? These are like the, some of the cheap. I, I think they got these at Walmart, actually. They're the cheapest synthetic brushes, but they have, they have, they're fairly nice uh, for what they are. And I go through them a lot, but so what I do is I'll, I'll sort of wipe the stuff off of it, and like a lot of this dark is going to go away. So you can see the graphite coming out. So you can see it coming off. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's doing that is because it's still slightly damp underneath, but it's okay. So oh, it's, it's basically cool, just though. leaving you with the shape uh, of what was there. And a lot of this actually, once I get to the final, when I get to the end result, and I you know use like a clear coat or whatever. Uh, it'll 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 get, it'll get darkened. Up. It'll dark. Yeah, it won't ever get that. Won't ever be as dark as that. Uh, so if I want that to stay there, then I just can't. I touch can't, it. Can't touch it as much. Uh, but I kind of like starting from a more uniform background that just hints at the textures that I can that I can then kind of bring into my drawing mm -hmm. more easily. Because if it's not overtly stated, if it's a subtle statement, your mind will make something of it. Whereas if it's stated too strongly originally, mm -hmm. your mind only sees what's there, right? Yeah. So, Carlos says you have a great voice. Oh, Asked if you. we're using a microphone. This is just uh, this is just on our phone. We have a one of the the Note Eight Samsung phones that we record mm -hmm. stuff on. But I appreciate that. Thank you. 
So at one point, like, see, I still, I love all this, but I know that it's not going to look like that. I know that it's going to go away. There are pieces where What does I, it do if you just start polishing right there? If I just start polishing, I'll show you. So uh, this is just a regular cotton cloth. And, and if I just start polishing, it does the same thing. It just goes away. All right? Except that if I don't lift the graphite up, most of the light detail goes away too. You see uh, there's still more detail here. Yeah, and yeah, basically I'm just kind of scraping off the excess graphite that's on the top. Pierre asked, do you find much difference when you do this with the two different graphite brands? Because they're very different when used directly. Uh, you know what? It's funny. Uh, <laughs> I've, I don't. I haven't. I didn't pay it that much attention. I've always just into mixed this them. this giant yeah. box, and I don't think he paid attention to which one. So, so it's actually a combination of the both of them. Yeah. So what I'll have to do is try one versus the other and see what kind of. A, I think a, a friend of mine actually did it with just one brand, like the, the Robert. Generals, Robert. And said Elrod. that it, See, like that. That was wet still, probably because uh, like I, I must have like touched that water. And so that's what happens if it if it gets wet when you when you're trying to get the powder off. Yeah. So. So we'll have. So Robert did a test, and I'll have to go back and look. He said one is easier to lift off than the other. And I think he said the generals is lighter. Than it the is Krita lighter color. than the Creta color. So mine is basically a mixture of the two because I know I'm going to work back into it on top. Uh, but. Um, Alexander said one thing he tried when he did his drawing was to sprinkle graphite on it and mist it with acetone. It, it created a really cool corroded effect. Yeah, uh, when we were doing this, uh, a, a similar technique to this at the the thing I did for TLC, he, for Carol Larson's Chang's workshop. Uh, or that, or one fantastic workshop. No, it was TLC. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the things, uh, Julie Barrow brought some uh, alcohol, and she mixed it with alcohol, and it caused a lot of bead. Uh -huh. you know? So now I just, after I get to the point, I start doing this. I'll polish it and that gets rid of the, by the time I'm done, it'll have like a gray, there'll be a gray surface that has a, a more of a uniform background. You know, it's funny because in some ways I like the, uh, the more textural original background and I, I've used that before too, but I'm trying to show something different here. This is how I'll start with a lot of things. Uh, if you put a lot of graphite on, you can actually start po like and polish it. Uh, you can actually polish it where it, to where it sticks to the board, but then you have to be careful because if you if you hit it with something too hard, it can lift off. Before, It'll lift off before you, before you seal, seal it. it. Yeah, that's what Wendy said. Why do you have to paint it? Could you just burnish the power directly on to save time? Uh, if, Painting it gives you the different textures right? and movement, though, so right? I have a like a pounce right here that's just graphite, and if you do that, it, it creates a more uniform. It creates a more uniform surface, right? It doesn't give you the the texture the little bits of texture and stuff that you see behind it yeah because he'll pull like these he'll pull these little pieces out in something right so if you look over here this is when I, if I just burnish this on with this which is just a pounce it gives you a, a darker sense of but it's laying on top of texture right now but it, this would just be a be graphite a smooth, layer right. right so ah uh, Brazil said hello hello Brazil would alcohol work better than acetone I like what um, happened but I kind of bummed that it can that it completely sealed it. I think uh, alcohol probably might work better because it evaporates so quickly and is almost entirely gone. I guess when you're done, and it doesn't have any residual chemical that will that would bind it because it'll still erase afterwards. Okay. Um. You know what? Before you clean yourself up, someone asked what the packet is called. It's called a pounce. Show oh, this. This is like a T-shirt. This is just like cotton, black cotton that I have. Like I tied up some cotton balls inside, and then I put like zip ties on it to hold it. And I, wait, wait, I, stop moving it. I dip it in graphite. See, it's just got zip ties. And so this is cotton balls with a cotton t-shirt yeah. piece around it. And he just mashes it into the yeah. graphite so that it's full of, like, if you poof it a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah, if you, it's a, it's got graphite in it as well, but mostly it's what I pick up from over there. Right. You know. They call it a pounce. It's, yeah, they, they used to actually use these, um, in history, they would do a drawing, a big drawing on, on like a parchment paper, mm -hmm. and then they would use this rolling uh, perforation thing that would cut holes in it, and then they would use graphite pounces to essentially uh, transfer the image to whatever uh, they're going to paint. That's right. That's right. So, and where does the steel wool come in later? Yeah, just when... It, it depends. I don't always use steel wool, but I, I use the steel wool if I want to like burn out a really nice white area and have it be really textural right. so that it, it kind of looks like you're looking through glass sometimes. Right. So... 
I see but, you have a, a glove on this time. Well, just because we're going to be, I don't want to take the time to go and wash my hands. So I'm going to do it again, just a little bit, so you can see it again. Just uh, because, you know, you can work on top of this and go back over it. And I'm going to dry this, you know, and then and then let it, uh, and then and then just burnish it or polish it uh, mm -hmm. without taking the rest of it off and, and see what happens. So, so there are times when I'll, uh, I'll use brushes and times when I'll use like these really, these like, uh, these are craft sponges mm -hmm. and I'll get them uh, pretty wet and then add graphite to it so that it gets thick, kind of powdery like mm -hmm. that. Andrew says, the reason he asked is because I like the corroded and beaded effects, and I also put a whole thick layer of crackle glaze over the whole thing. Crackle glaze is something I've been thinking about lately in terms of oil paints. I haven't done enough research yet because I know that there are, there's actually a crackle process that you can make that happen. Uh, but I think that's, that, that would be very interesting looking to see. So, so I'm going to leave that like that and dry it. Right. So everything in my studio has usually got a, a light covering of graphite on it, by the way. Everything has a light coming in there. Someone else was, I put up the photo of the Boston Red Pointer. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see how that works. I haven't found that yet. Oh, we haven't found it. Oh, the Boston Red Pointer is... Since we moved... M-I-A uh, right now. I haven't been able to find it. It's in a box that we haven't unpacked yet. I probably have put it somewhere. Probably. Sorry. But it's just a rotational lead, oh. lead point. Yeah. Hans Belmier, B-E-L-L-M-E-R, is uh, someone asked who the um, artist was earlier. Yeah. H-A-N-S. B-E-L-L-M-E-R. It might be B-E-L-M-E-R. B-E-L-M-E-R. Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember if there's two L's or not. But. How many <laughs> layers of this process do you typically use in a piece? <laughs> it changes depending on the piece. Uh, it, it mostly depends on whether or not I get what I want in the first... I can do it once and get what I want, or sometimes right. I'll do it all night and, and only get it by the end of the night. Uh, and what I want changes based on a lot of times what I see. Right. right. So... Carlos said, sorry, looking at the neat results, he thought it was digital. Oh, thank you. So, um, all right. So. See, now it's a little darker and I went over it again and, and uh, usually by the time I'm done polishing it so much, uh, you can run your hand across it and there you won't bring up any graphite. You like those alt, those really light spots on it? Hmm? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that uh, it's it doesn't need to be uniform. But uh, if you can see uh, how it starts to look, okay, and telling, like for for whatever reason, this bit here stayed on and polished to a deeper shine than the other. And that sometimes has nothing to do with anything other than something that's going on with the board, right? Right. Right. Sometimes there's just stuff that happens, you know. Mm-hmm. Biomorphous says you're a true mad scientist. Oh, thank and you. And it's inspiring as heck. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. There's a, there's a feeling sometimes of alchemy to doing all this. Like you're, you know, transmutating materials. Yeah. You know. <laughs> this surface is ampersand clay board. Yep. Remember this, this will be up under the stories for 24 hours after we're done. So you can see it from the beginning. That's dried really quick. Ampersand clay board. Those are the ones, the recent ones. Um, the Lonely King, Mr. Kind. I can show him the hand. And see, this is a more uniform uh, background, but you can still see hints of the texture underneath it. And usually wait, that's... Wait, don't move it. There you go. Yeah, usually that's all I need is uh, just some idea of it. I'm going to do it one more time because I think it needs more. All right. Let's see, I'm going to use... 
This, this is, is a like this a is an old Mr. Clean magic eraser. So what this will end up doing is taking off more than I'm putting down. And I, I'm just basically making white areas on the board again. I'm going to play with this. And so this is this is an example of playing with it until you get what you want. So sometimes I'll do this for an hour or two. You know, I'll go back and forth and. I'll, I'll find something I like and then I'll completely screw it up and then I have to go back and start over again. But tonight I'm just being, I'm having fun just playing with it because I, I want to show everybody the process. So, so that really is not that attractive to me. I mean, it depends on the kind of strokes you're wanting to get, right? Right. So, so you're gonna... I really like the brush because it gives striations more. So this is usually my favorite thing to do is just like get really kind of... Because all those all those lines just I mean first off it you know obviously it starts to look like you're dealing with fur you know and then if I go back in with just water it'll dry and make those those and it makes it wet yeah or it takes it off well yeah it definitely makes it wet okay oh, sorry I'm tired <laughs> that's okay that's funny uh, it's in the pool too long so. You ever have no one's asking do you ever have a problem with it getting too wet and destroying the board I not really you the, have. the board i've never you know i've actually submerged these things to clean them off before no oh, that's right you can take it all the way to the water yeah. and just wipe it off i mean i suppose i suppose you could if you left it in the water too long the, the board got completely saturated mm -hmm. from the other side because this side is actually pretty sealed all right uh, you might get some bleed through on the back around the edges do you already like have here? an idea of a drawing that will go on this specific board, or do you prepare a few at a time and select one later? Oh, it went, it moved. Yeah, sometimes. It moved, that might be kind of cool. Sometimes I have an idea. So you can definitely start with an idea. Uh, and I've, you know, gotten to a point where I can, I can sort of control things if I want to, if I want to exert control over it. That takes a lot more time and sure. Uh, so yeah, you can definitely do that. I, I work. I don't work one way all the time. I guess I have about five or ten different like patterns of of a process that I that I kind of go back and forth. Right, with. right. Uh, someone asked, I wonder if the textures give you specific ideas about what you're going to create. They definitely do. There are times when I don't start with an idea and I just rely on the board to show me something. Right. You know. Ever experiment using colors at this point? Uh, I've done transparent like oil glazes on top of the board. Uh, but not at this, like you don't use like sepia. No, or... I, I don't. I, I, I think there are some pigments that would probably work like this if you did it with just dry pigment. Mm -hmm. Because basically you're just making watercolor again. Right. Uh, as long as you end up, you know, solidifying it at some point in some way. Because even this, after I'm done, if I get it wet before I seal it, it'll just come back off. Right. So it's, can... that, I mean, regular graphite is water soluble. You know, it'll come up. See, like this looks like a very much like a bone, like the end of a bone pattern. Alex says, my man, every week, you're oh, my, you're my only drawing dude. Oh, you stayed okay. drawing again this week with you in mind all the time. Your That's suggestions. awesome. That is awesome. The sun isn't around this week. Oh. Oliver loves you. Oh, thank you. You know, it's... Uh, yes, you can use a hair dryer, Anya. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Use, it doesn't yeah. have to be a hot air gun. No. M most of the time. I don't know why the hot air my, gun... My hair dryer is right over there. Ah. That's the hair dryer we've had for 25 years. Yes. <laughs> Yes, hair drivers are fine. Nice texture, as you say. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, what do you seal it with before you start the drawing? You don't seal it with anything. It's just the raw clay board. Yeah. All right. And if you missed it earlier, uh, one of the things that I do after it's dry like this is I... Lift off. I get rid of... You know the stuff on the top. The longer you take to do this, the better off you're going to be in in terms of keeping the texture. Yes, yes we have a website, AlanWilliamsStudio.com. I put the originals up there. Our shopping cart is down, but you can email me. 
My email is all over there, victorialtw at gmail.com. So when, I, when I'm doing this, and as you can see it, you can see it piling up. Mm-hmm. So if I just, if I take enough time and do it like, spend like half an hour, you know, just gently, but basically uh, doing kind of a circular pattern to get the, get the graph, graphite up off the board rather than pushing it down into the board, then I have a better chance of keeping the idea, the hint of all those different things in there that I want to keep. And our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Alan Williams. And just so you know, we are in the process of talking with somebody about making kind of a full length process video. Yes. Alexandru says pencil isn't water soluble. Do you know uh, the difference between the graphite and leads? I, you know the thing it's not water soluble like watercolor but but water can move graphite uh, if you've ever done a graphite drawing and then run a brush over it mm -hmm. you've seen it move uh, so graphite is such a pigmented it's such a granulated uh, uh, material that it, it moves you know with water pretty easy so I mean it uh, Sean we do have a YouTube and these will eventually go up on I think I've gotten up to the middle of May they go up on Patreon first, and then eventually they're released to our YouTube channel, which is um, Alan Williams Studio. Can I say that uh, when she's when, whoever said that it's not water soluble? That you're right; it doesn't dissolve in water. Right. It doesn't. It just moves in, around. In, right. Right. It's not water permanent. I guess you would say. Right. Uh, I guess what I meant was, do you seal the graphite that was painted on before you start drawing the final? He does okay. not. I don't usually seal the thing until the very end because I want to have the option of moving it around again. Because he changing. actually will erase back into this once he sketches something on it. Yeah. And I, I do. So I, that it doesn't get sealed because part of this will come off. Right. Uh, you Okay. So one of the things you could do is create a surface texture like I just did. And then you could seal it and just use that to paint on. Correct. Right. Yes. Just yes. like you would with an acrylic paint, you would do yes. an underpainting in acrylic and make a texture to paint oils on top of. Yes. So yeah, you could definitely do that. Don't think that. I mean, there's really. I mean, if you get into it and experiment with it, you'll find. You know, there's like a dozen different ways you can approach it or more. Right. Uh, and you know, there's. Uh, you see, like you drawing? Uh, I okay. did. I did. Because oh, I touched water on the side. That's all right. Sure. That stuff happens. <laughs> The thing you get you get used to uh, mistakes happening and uh, figuring out what you're going to do with them later. Which is, oops, that's my finger. Which is funny because years ago, twenty years ago, you did not like any of this randomness in your drawings. I didn't. I used to do everything like was completely smooth, and it was done with like a hard lead pencil, and it was so boring. It was like it was it was tear inducing. No, it wasn't. It was not boring. Well, you were just young. You had your health. <laughs> You're, you're quoting Go Brother. Uh, no. no, no, that's actually Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. We speak in movie quotes that's half the time it's here. That's right. So that's so, and I still okay. get that relatively fast. Okay, and pause right. so I can just look at it. Wait, don't move it because right. it's got a. There's a lot in there. Are you gonna burnish well, it now? I'll show you. Yeah. So from the side, it's still kind of matte. There's a little spots of shininess. Yeah. And so. Make sure it's dry. This is uh, less burnishing and more just polishing. At this point, if you screw something up, remember you can always take it start over. to the yeah. to the sink with a Mr. Clean eraser and scrub it off, and it will be almost perfectly white. I have a box of those right here. I can show. They're Mr. Clean Magic Sponge erasers that they sell in like the Walmart uh, uh, cleaning section. Yes, for. Uh, don't cleaning. get the ones that foam that have soap in them. Just no, get the, just the, original the regular ones. old yeah. flat ones. Yeah. All right, let me get a clean rag. So this is I do have to stop and get a clean rag because it starts to get too dirty. To so now less much much less of it's coming up. You don't worry. You'll need a little mask with these. Hmm? Uh, you know I have an overhead fan that's pushing everything down. Uh, and when I do brush it, it tends to, I mean, probably I should wear a mask, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, but, but it's not, air, you use a mask when you airbrush. I do use an, a mask, mask when, I, when I airbrush like a, my, my matte, matte medium, medium and stuff. on or anything like that. If you um, use an airbrush for any, you know, sealing anything, do you ever, 
do you ever do subtractive drawings on these? That's all of yeah. his drawings are all subtractive. Yeah, it's 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 probably eighty or ninety percent subtractive, and then then there's that, and then I draw back into it to define things, and I'll show yes. you. I'll bring it out because uh, there is a, I have examples that I can show you where you can see it pretty easy. So so right now this is usually where I'll start. I'll take it over my desk and start playing with it to see what I want to do. And I'll I show you what ask, the, what's your idea for this piece. Um, right now, I don't. I don't have an idea. But, so, oh, well, my hand got sweaty. Yeah, and then inside plastic. Yeah. Oh, I'll let a little water. I let that dry. Um, from your hand? Yeah, it's just from the sweat that came out of my hand, off my hand. Oh, oh, I see the spots. Yeah, let me try it real quick. So our website and YouTube is Alan Williams Studio. These go up on our Patreon first, and then they get released to YouTube. If you want to jump over to Patreon, I also have um, different levels that you can subscribe to if you want, or you can just wait for them on YouTube. So even those little spots, which, which I didn't touch, but I dried, they left little little dots on it. But my thing is whatever, see, because they just kind of wipe off now. But here's the thing. Uh, okay, my hand's clean because it was in the glove, and I burnished it, and I haven't sealed it yet, but there's very little graphite coming off now. Can I do that? Yeah. There's almost no graphite. I mean, just a little bit. No, no there's even. none. So, so now it's a really stable surface that I can even, if my hand's not sweaty or My oily, hands are still wrinkly from swimming. <laughs> yeah. If your hand, Sorry. you know, I keep, I wash my hands two or three times, like an hour when I'm working on this stuff, just okay. to keep oils off of it. Right, but right. I tend to put my hand on it, uh, and so, or, and I also have a mall stick, which will keep my hand all over the drawing. But uh, and so, if I lean it up like this, you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> what do you find is the best way to seal your drawings? You use different. I use I usually use a clear coat, like an ac ac acrylic gloss. Cryl clear Krylon clear acrylic gloss. Yeah. So. But anyway, here, I'll take this over to the desk, and I'll right. get one that has a drawing on it. Okay. So you also, just as a note, remember to clean the back of it. Because you'll set it down on your hand. It, yeah, you'll have it. There'll be graphite on the back of it from where, you, where you've been working on it. And the edges. Yes. You, you know, because the edges will get graphite on yes. it, too. All right. I'll go get one of the drawings that I've done. Look, it's back to being messy again. That's okay. It's not too bad. I swear it. I'll be right there. Okay. This piece was done completely like this. This is one of his originals that all you can see it's sealed with the Krylon crystal clear. And it has a powdered background. And then it's worked subtractively. You actually use the brush for the wings in this one too, right? That one? Yeah, <clears throat> I did. I, I brought on I brought in thicker graphite and then uh let it stand as it was. Um Someone asked if you'd shellac it. You have used a resin coating on some of them. But yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I've used resin, uh, but you know, then again, there's the question of whether or not resin uh, yellows up after time. Art resin isn't supposed to yellow, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I didn't feel comfortable using it all the time. So, so whoop. Hold on, just leave it down there. All right. Can you see it down there? Yeah, give it a minute. So that was, uh, this was one of the most uniform surfaces I made, and it was just a coating of pure graphite with no texture that I polished down to an even surface, and then worked subtractively in to, uh, it's, it's obviously my hand, <laughs> I worked up subtractively in it to, to, to create the values. I used uh, kneaded erasers, and... Uh, Are and those rooms that you wrote in your hand? Or no, not yet. There's nothing, you know, this is not quite finished yet, but can you see it? Yeah, but it's hard to see it. Like, the same thing with this. So just so you know, uh, you can't really sketch on top of this stuff once once you've established it, because any time you make a mistake or want to erase, that is that a will part of the drawing. Destroy the background. So what that you, you do, have. if you have an idea that you want to do, work it up on paper first, and then project or transfer it in some way uh, onto your board after you've put on the graphite. So. <laughs> nope, that doesn't make it any better. No. Hold on, wait, leave it there. So. It's really hard to see it. There, that's better. What's interesting is how, if, if these are in low light, how little shows, and then if they're in a well-lit room, how much shows. Yes. There's a huge okay, difference. Okay, Carlos, would love to see a live video later of adding the white translucent layers. 
That part drives me nuts. He does not add. This is all subtractive, actually. Yeah. So, on clayboard, what, what you're pretty much, uh, in terms of pulling out whites, you've got kneaded erasers, abrasive pencil erasers, which are like the, the these are, there's Faber-Castell makes a, a version of this. It's pretty easy to get. Faber-Castell 7058. Yeah. Perfection, Perfection 7058. 7058B. And this is an antique version of the same thing. It's just a, an old version that I like because they're harder. It's they're a typewriter harder. eraser, right? It's a typewriter eraser, yeah. And then... Those are very abrasive. Electric erasers will take off a lot of white. So I remember something you said a couple weeks ago, mm. and it was uh, if people would take as much time erasing right. as they do drawing. <coughs> the, the, the key to doing this is you have to draw with your eraser with as much subtlety as you would with a pencil. And you bring it up lightly over a period of time, and then you control your values. Mm -hmm. The tendency people have is to get really aggressive with their erasers right away. And so mm -hmm. they end up like having to fight with the values the entire time. Because the tendency is to want to take this all the way back you know, to white or something in some places, when in reality, there's nothing, like if I'm drawing my hand, there's very little, even on this, there's nothing on it that's pure white. It doesn't the really, highest none, of this go back, the highest. none of this goes back to the white of the board. Right. Right. Neither does this, except for possibly right there. there. Mm -hmm. Even the highlights on the fingers and the hands and stuff, that doesn't go back to the white of the board. And if I... Nocturne if I, asked if you use scratch tools, which... Oh, yeah, yeah that's, definitely. Yeah. Like, I, I, def, I actually have regular scratch board tools that I use and, and some that I fabricated out of old, you know, metal uh, mechanical pencils, like... Like that, it's like a needle from a compass or something mm -hmm. that I put in a, in a, in a mechanical pencil. Uh, and that then, was steel wool. Okay. That that yeah, was done with steel, steel wool. wool. This is a, a what they call it. I guess this is. A, I know you're Barbara. That's a fiberglass uh, Whoop, pencil. Move in it. Fiberglass pencil. <coughs> yeah, this is little fiberglass fibers, and it's it's, it's scratchy and kind of random looking. Oh, uh, someone at, is, someone asked something twice that is not off subject, but it is. Um, Schizo Giraffe asks, says, your work is amazing. Any tips, well, tips for having patience while drawing? I always want to do everything in one go. Oh, uh, see. Maybe that might come with age. I, I think it, it actually just, uh, letting yourself realize that. Uh, there are boring parts. Not, yeah, I mean, well, no, there, there, are, there, there are parts of this that become not so much boring as, like, more meditational. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, that's kind of how I get into the parts that are in the middle when I'm having to render. I'll, I'll put an audio book on sometimes and I'll just sit here and I know what's going to happen and I know where I've got to go with it. So I just sit down and I... After I, you've sketched right. the uh, hand that you're going to yeah. do and you need to render and so... Right. And so I'll just, I'll just, I'll sit here and listen to music or... And I realize that, that you know, just, you just have to start off knowing that it's not going to all happen at once. I mean, I can do a piece like this and I did this in one night. Right. It's this big though, and there's not much there, right? Uh, bigger pieces take more time, and it's not. This isn't built for doing concept art. It's not built for 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 doing. No, your you know, concept art is much faster. Right. Yeah. When I do concept work, I don't do stuff like this. I do I do more sketches, more line art. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know that you, when you think about it, you think there are a lot of things that suffer because you have to make spot, on the spot decisions and. If you're doing a piece for yourself or doing work for yourself, that doesn't have to be one of those things. You know what I mean? You can right. sit there and look at it. Like I have three pieces now that are on the mantle that I'm that may be done, but I'm not quite sure yet. So I'm working on other things and I, I look at them every day. And as I look at them, it either occurs to me that they're done or it occurs to me that this is what it needs. Right. Sometimes it takes me a while to figure out what's going wrong with the piece. Right. Because I'm, I'm too into it to notice. Mm -hmm. Like if... Because you can definitely become infatuated. Well, Chase asked, uh, how it. long was one night? How long was one night? This was probably, I don't know, I probably worked on this for, I would say, a good solid six hours. Yeah. When I say one night, it's not like, it's not like a, you know, uh, when I say work for a day, I'm not talking like a farmer's day where they work 12 hours out of the day. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm we talking. We have kids. Yeah, we do things. It's, it's we were like, just at the pool. My yeah. brother called at 530. This, Come is on a, over. this is about six hours of, of, of. Of gentle massaging and like getting up every hour to get a drink you know it's not right you don't uh, sit for I, I try not to sit for that long at one time anyway. right our website and YouTube is Alan Williams studio website is Alan Williams studio.com uh, these go up on the story 
for 24 hours and then they will go on our Patreon, which is just Alan Williams, patreon.com forward slash Alan Williams. And then it will eventually be released to YouTube. So there is another one up on YouTube you can go watch. Um, I try to describe them, don't get them. And so in this particular instance, I didn't, I'm not sure what it's going to turn into. Uh, I'm not like, I, I'll play with shapes. And you know how I, I'll like, if, if I if I think it's too too bright, I'll just grab it and like really scrub it with my finger, which I know freaks people out because they talk about the oils in your fingers. Yes. But it, this is so random that if I make a spot or something on it, it's not going to do anything to it that I can't deal with. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, I've had things happen in the middle of something that where I've had to like erase out a, a mark that's like that and then redraw it in by hand and mm -hmm. then smooth it out. And I did. Because it's it, okay. when you think about fixing a problem in a painting, remember that there are people in the world that restore art for a living, and they can come to a painting that somebody painted 200 years ago, and fix it, even if it's been damaged or, or you know or, or ruined in some ways. They can they can repair it, and if they can do that, I can certainly learn how to fix my own art that I've sat down and done myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone uh, is saying thank you, bunch of people. <coughs> thank you for the videos. Oh, you're very welcome. They love your art. Thank you very much for watching. Um, so this I still is, think uh, one night seems fast. You know, I, I've gotten faster over the years. I, I don't, I don't um, think about speed so much. To 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 most everyone's uh, dismay uh, around me that wants I think me to you're work. You're talking. Out. <laughs> He's staring right at me. He's like well, to everyone around me. That that means me because I go tick tick. Oh my gosh. You well, know. you know the thing. Someone is, was asking if you have a Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. It's. The speed is relative to your needs and what you want to do, right? So, you know, if, if one night is, is, is too fast for you, there's, there's nothing wrong with taking more time. Uh, mm -hmm. When I used to do drawings, I would do it, uh, let's say, 10 years ago, if I were to sit down and do a drawing like this, it might take me a week or two yeah, that's to do true. that. Wow. You know, and I, could, I can do this in like, like two or three days now. Like, again, I'm not talking about 12-hour days. No, no, because mm -hmm. you get up. But in the afternoon and hang out with us and then you start working a little bit and then we do dinner time and everything with the kids. So just for an example, uh, this is how a kneaded eraser will take it off if you're just gentle with it. You can almost pull off gradations that are as subtle as an airbrush if you yes. want, but that don't really look like airbrush. But you know, the thing about anything that comes off smooth is you have to go back in and tighten it up a little bit. You know, it's the same thing as, as if, if you use a smudge technique on a drawing, you don't you don't want to not work back into that right, because, right. because it'll make the drawing look marshmallowy, you know. Right. Uh, Do you baby the corners of the board? She's often received them in the in the post cracked. Uh, we don't think we've ever had an issue, right? I haven't had any, many problems with it. Sometimes the the very edges of the board will get like frayed or something. Like right here, you can see on the edge of this board is frayed. But I always think about the fact that this is going to be under a frame. Under a frame. <laughs> I framed because, them. Yeah, there's a there's an actual eighth of usually an eighth of an inch. If it's a big frame, it's up to a quarter of an inch. Right. Of a, it's called the rabbit of, the, of a rabbit that they call it on the edge of the frame. Which so years ago he would draw something. Oh, the, the hand would be right there, and it would be covered up by the rabbit. And so, so with these abrasive erasers, uh, you can pull off stuff pretty. And, and I have that's what I have this uh, this this is super smooth wet dry sandpaper. It's like 600 grit. Yes. Which I used to, I'm like way behind in questions. You I guys will have to, to email me. I use this to sharpen. Oh yeah, know. that's really sharp. And then and then I'll sit here and and pull off little. It, I I'll draw in a very like. I'll pull things off in a very slow way. Someone asked, can these techniques be applied to a different medium of art, or is this only for graphite? Well, I I assume that you could do it with other things as well. But you'd have to experiment. The key to doing any of these things and finding a, a way of doing things is experimenting. Experiment. So anytime somebody asks me something and I don't know the answer to it, I usually go off and experiment with it for a while. Right. And play. Uh, I assume that there are other um, pigments that this would probably work with. We've talked about that. And the reason you don't technically want to do all the pigments is because you don't have a pencil that matches it. Well, it's, it's about working back into it. And right. with graphite, I have other pieces of like, I'll work back into this with uh, the Tombow Manos uh, for detail. If I need to sharpen an edge or create a darker, a darker area or something, the Tombow Manos work really well. Uh, the Mitsubishi Hayami Soft Leads, these 10 Bs work really well for doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I have like a, these uh, 
Someone asked if he could use this wash look on regular drawing paper. Someone had emailed me that. Or okay, so the answer to that is if you have a super sturdy paper that's very smooth, right. you can do some of it. But it's, diff it's more difficult on paper because paper is fibrous. And the, the way you have to erase things to lift up can sometimes damage the paper. Right. If you're, I've done These it before These are really, on paper. really hard. Yeah. These will take almost anything. I've done it before on a Fabriano, like 150 pound paper hot press. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does, it does, takes, it takes a little bit more finesse with your hands because you can really easily damage. It has to be super dry when you start lifting it up. Uh, if it's not super dry, it's just like you're basically just scrubbing the paper out, you know, and it'll... Clear, it'll it says it, the abrasive racers get clogged very quickly. I think that's yeah. what the sandpaper is for. Yeah, that is, this is how I, this is how I get the, you know, I also do this just to get the, the graphite the off of it. And another thing I do is when I'm working with them is I'll, between strokes, I'll spin them a little bit in my hand. And that helps for some reason, you know, it, all it needs is that one little edge. We have about 15 minutes left, so, maybe 10. So that's what it looks like with just like kneaded eraser and abrasive eraser. Let me give you a piece of that. So this is a fine um, steel wool. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. So what's fun is actually doing a drawing where you have a highlight somewhere and then just lightly running the steel wool on top of it and it puts a texture on top of the highlight that looks cool. like it gives it a depth. That's yeah, what I did I here. That's why you see the, the actual lines over oh, over the cloth. Oh, you and did it, the drawing and then right. did that. It gives a dimensionality to the light. So once you do this, and steel wool is a metal, so it's actually going if to, you, if you did steel wool on a white piece of paper, it would actually leave a mark by itself because it is a, it's like silver point. Right. So at the end of it, you know, to make it a little bit even uh, lighter. April says back. sheets of drywall paper are great for sharpening on it, too. Yeah. E even, uh, what do you call it, um, pastel paper you can use to sharpen that oh, stuff. Oh, that's right. You have that, too. So you take a kneaded eraser to clean up the highlights if you're going to make, like, an area. And you want it. Right? So, and if you want to really go back and do a pinpoint light highlight... Then you need something like an electric eraser. So none or, of this is white paint, like someone was asking earlier. It's not white layers over top that's subtractive. So, and you can get this so white that it, it, like, obviously stands out on the piece. Like, it's it doesn't really unify with the highlight. You're right, it doesn't. And then you have to go back in and kind of blend it in again. And if it's a particularly tough area, like right in there, I'll go back in and very subtly, like I'll push it with the, the abrasive eraser and, and take it off. I'm not sure this qualifies as a circle. Daryl's been asking me to draw a circle for the I last know. time. I know, he said he saw a circle. He wants a circle. That would work only if your thing was up here. I know. But then I couldn't read all the questions. So. How did you prep the surface? The surface is not prepped. It's straight ampersand clay board. So I guess you could say that ampersand prepped, prepped the surface for, us, for me Just because it's a very smooth clay board. Yeah, it's C L A Y B O R D. You can get it through Dick Blick or online, even yeah. Amazon. There's nothing to it. Hey, you can see the beginning of it and how he washed it on and everything. This will go up in the stories as soon as we're done. Mm -hmm. Takes about like five minutes or something. So, and the more of this, you know, that you do, the more you'll find that you can, like, leave certain textures, and they'll suggest different things. Yeah. Um, hi, Joe Beth. Thank you very much. Stop by to say hi. And occasionally, <laughs> just to get rid of, like, I'll do this to the whole thing, because uh, some of the, you know, eventually the dust will, see, it's still not coming up there. There's still not really nothing on my hand. But I'll do this just in case there's powder somewhere that I didn't see or whatever. Right. Someone was asking about art blocks. Um, for me, an art block is not being able to figure out uh, which one of the ideas that I have decided I want to do that I'm going to do next. Um, because I, I don't really, I haven't for a long time gotten the kind of art block where I can't think of what to do. My art block tends to be uh, 
I have all these ideas that are of equal weight. I'm like the dog with two bowls, yeah. and I can't choose between two either bones. one. Two bones? Yeah, you can't choose between either, either of those There's two. Too much bones. Yeah. The electric tool is just an electric eraser. Okay, this, this one? Oh, that one. This I got from Micromark, and it's actually an engraver. And I took out the metal engraver, and I put in the small white erasers that come with these Tombow zeros. <laughs> you and, made your own electric And I made a, a, a more, because otherwise you're using these, the Sakura. Uh, and they're a little they they're bigger. See the, they can't see that. There you so, go. Sakura electric eraser, or this one is the. This is a Micromark engraver. These are like 19 bucks. And then you get the, the small little uh, two millimeter white eraser uh, refills uh, that go with the Tombow monos. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the Tombow zero, mono zeros. Mm -hmm. And they fit in this perfect. You just have to trim them and realize that, you know, you can't really extend it. You have to use a little Allen's wrench to. Mm -hmm. pull it out but it's worth it if you're doing pinpoint highlights right have you yeah. ever used a clay board with charcoal no you don't you know, like the I, I i have charcoal but for whatever you reason never use it. charcoal seems more uh it, it seems more gritty to me it has this weird feeling when i try to use it and it mm -hmm. doesn't feel the same uh but i'm determined to play with it more until i get used to it and try it again so so here, you know, when okay, I'm doing... Okay, we got about eight minutes left because I started it at 9.08. We were late tonight. Sorry, guys. So this is this is what it looks like when you start adding more, uh, you know, when you, you can you can draw back into it with the tom with the Tombow. Mm -hmm. This is a 6B. I think 6B is the, 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 the softest lead Tombow makes. Tombow Mono 100 yeah, right. 6Bs. And it, it draws in it pretty well. Now, occasionally there will be inexplicably a place where the, it won't, the, the board won't let you draw. It'll just, the pencil will glide on the top and it won't leave a mark. And when that happens, I either go back and rough up the surface mm -hmm. with a piece of steel wool, or I'll take a, a needle and just cross-hatch the area lightly and then work back into it with a pencil. And I usually can work back into it with enough of a sharp point and fill in the little uh, flaws right. that you can't see it. So Okay, so we have about five minutes left. I want to thank everybody for coming. This is going to be up under the stories if you missed the first part. Yeah. This wasn't really about making a full drawing. It was just about showing you guys the process where, for, where I get to the other pieces. Yeah, I think we've done this like twice in the last month. You can find some yeah. on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is under Alan Williams Studio, along with our website, which is alanwilliamsstudio.com. Yes, I know the... Shopping cart is down. Email me if you want something. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll have a piece. I can show you what happens when I do it on a piece of gesso board that I've prepared myself. Yes. Because it has a different uh, effect when I do that. It does have a different effect. You're actually, that's, those are kind of going up on Patreon right now. Mm -hmm. That one. Um, someone asked if we were having any, if you were having any shows in the Northeast, in New York or anything. Right, not right now. You have a show coming up in Santa Monica, California in August. Um, August 11th is the opening of it. Someone barefoot moose said, just so you know, if you started classes, absolutely throwing money at you. Oh, well, that's very kind. Uh, I've been thinking about it. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing with the videos is trying to refine uh, my own uh, ability to, to talk about my process. Yourself, yeah. To explain your process. Because you know what? A lot of, when I've asked him, he'll go, I don't know. <laughs> I know, but then again, you also forget how you did something, and if we've taken a video of it, yeah. you can go back and watch it. So that has happened also. So. I do. I play with so many uh, techniques when I when I work that I'll completely forget how I did something, you know, and, and come back to... You're going into the things, aren't you? Yeah. This is just a variation of when you were young and you did the scribble drawing, and then yeah. you went back and colored every, all the you little shapes. You are coloring the little so shapes. So this What's is just... going to be? I know, but it on. has a texture to it. It almost looks like a ball of wire. It does. You know? But this works on a larger scale too. Like that's why I have that giant brush over there because I can I can do this on a bigger piece. But you just have to it. It still takes the same amount of time. Will you um, go get the black and white piece? Which one? That I don't have a scan of yet. The other sarcophagus. Oh yeah, I'll show the you. Sarcophagus, yeah. which is another one of the clayboard ones, right? Yeah. He's gonna go get one. He finished, but I don't have a scan of it, so it hasn't gone up online. So. They're all vying for classes. So this is sarcophagus. This was clay board. This is a larger clay. This is a 12 by 24. Coming closer to it. Mm -hmm. 
And so this is done with the same technique. Yep. Some of this texture was in there. Mm -hmm. Some of the texture was suggested by the stuff from the background. Some of it I, in, I purposely put in and designed that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's a broken symmetry, you know? Mm-hmm. So. There we go. Yep. Put them down. All right. So, well, I'm glad you like, well, they like the idea of you doing the class. Uh, He's trying so. to figure out how to actually articulate well to be able to explain how to do it. What would be fun is to be able to, to do it in person because then we could get like all get like dirty, dirty. and because <laughs> when we when I did I did this at a one fantastic week and there was a group of five of us around. Uh, there was more than that. Or one ten, fantastic. It, was like, it got close to like being eight or ten people. Yeah, that were workshop. One and, fantastic workshop. And it, it was like playing with. The, we were just sitting around making mud pies with graphite and then you know drawing into them and you know it was just a, it was really fun. Yes. And when people had like a problem or something, I was right there to uh, to tell them what what my solution would be. You know, uh, not that I have, my solutions are the only ones, because I mean the thing is is you'll get into this stuff, whether you use this technique or someone else's, and you're going to figure out that parts of it are just going to flow with your nature, and some parts aren't going to do that. Right. And you have to decide if it's worth it to struggle with it, or right. if you just like to do the stuff that that's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Some people make a great make great art doing what's easy for them. Other people make great art like going for the stuff that's hard for them to do. This none of this stuff to me is all that easy, but it's becoming <laughs> easier. It's becoming easier because I've been doing it a lot. Right. You know? You've been doing it well for the last like year and a half. Um, yeah, the sarcophagus one. Asked someone asked if they would be for sale. It is going up to the Copper Show. Yeah. So it'll be at the opening. The, sh the show is August 11th, and the name of the show is Covenant. And I'm also, uh, I'm also. Uh, um, it's at copperogallery.com. Yeah. Yeah. That it'll be up there. You can see there'll be previews and things. And of course, I'll be spamming Instagram and Facebook and Twitter when you know before the opening, so that piece will be for sale. Yes. And they do put everything up online. And if you go to Copro, you can also get on a preview list. Yes, a preview list. And they do pre-sales in case, and if you were wondering, or if anybody was wondering, uh, not that not that you have to do that. You can just go and look at the art too, which is you know that's cool. Right. Website Alan Williams Studio, YouTube Alan Williams Studio. So, what I like to tell people is, I I have had people ask me if I'm proud of any particular piece, and I like to tell them that it's not so much as that I'm proud of a piece as that I like doing the work. I like drawing. It's not that I like a particular drawing, although some pieces I grow accustomed to and I like after the fact for a while. Uh, but I, I, I like doing it. I like sitting down and working. Yes, and if and you like to sit down and work and do your work, then, then that becomes, you know, it becomes more about what it feels good to you to do, right? Right, right, right. Instead of, uh, instead of trying to achieve like perfection in a piece, I, I try to achieve peace in my process. Does that make sense? I achieve, instead of trying to achieve perfection in any individual piece that I do, I try to look for peace in myself in the process that I work in. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yes. So. Very cool. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up here. It should be almost time to finish up. Thanks for watching. Yes, thanks everyone for coming by. Stop by the Facebook page. It's kind of... Um, and website alanwilliamsstudio.com patreon.com forward slash alan williams everyone is saying thank you very much oh thank you thank you for watching yes and have fun drawing this week have fun and if it's if it's hard have fun struggling yes you know that's that's what i do i'm, I'm like always like feel like I'm on the edge of falling. Yeah. But I've, I've gotten used to it so much that I feel like that's where I should be. Uh -huh. Carlos says, thank you, Vicki and Alan. And we oh, thank, thank you. you for watching us and everything. Yep. We will talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Alan. Bye-bye.